I want to take a look at some of the different money market instruments. Now money market is a bit of a misnomer because we usually think of cash as money, but here we're talking about securities. And money market securities are usually sold in large denominations of a million dollars or more. They have very low default risk and they mature in one year or less from their issue date although most mature in less than 120 days. So when we talk about the money market, what we're really talking about is short-term securities. You may have heard the term capital markets. That's for longer-term securities, such as bonds or stocks. Some of the different money market instruments, treasury bills, I'm not going to talk about them in this video because I have a separate video where I go into greater detail about them but I am going to talk about some of these other ones. Uh, federal funds are sometimes referred to as Fed funds, uh, repurchase agreements, negotiable certificates of deposit, commercial paper, bankers acceptance, and euro dollars. All are money market securities or money market instruments. So the first one I want to talk about are Fed funds. These are short-term funds transferred that is loaned or borrowed between financial institutions usually for a period of a day. Now they're used by banks to meet short-term needs to meet reserve requirements. And the term Fed or Federal has nothing to do with the federal government but has to do with the fact that these are held at the Federal Reserve Bank. And the interest rate is known as the Fed Funds Rate. Repurchase agreements. Okay. This is a, a security or an instrument that's similar to Fed funds, but non-banks can participate. Uh, a firm sells treasury securities, but agrees to buy them back at a certain date, usually 3 to 14 days later, for a certain price. Hence the term repurchase. Okay. They sell the securities, these treasury securities, but they agree to repurchase them. Um, What's nice about this is these uh, repurchase agreements are essentially a short-term collateralized loan. So if you think about the person making the loan or the institution making the loan, they're holding on to collateral. They're holding on to tre some sort of treasury security. So there's really no risk involved there. Um, this is also a market where the Fed may, uh, might use to conduct its monetary policy. So if the Fed wants to increase the money supply, they might purchase treasury securities in the repo market. And if they wanted to decrease the money supply, they might sell uh, treasury securities in the repo market. Um, negotiable certificates of deposit. These are bank-issued security that documents a deposit and specifies the interest rate and the maturity date. Okay? You shouldn't confuse them with the CDs that you hear um, or that you see at your local bank. Those are usually for you know small depositors who are depositing five hundred dollars and want to save for five you know six months or five years or something like that. Uh, denominations here range from a hundred thousand to ten million. A very popular money market instrument is commercial paper. These are unsecured promissory notes issued by corporations uh, that mature in no more than 270 days. And the reason uh, 270 days is used is because if it, were, if it matured in more than 270 days, it would require SEC rate, uh, registration, okay, which can be a costly and time-consuming um, event. Uh, commercial paper uh, is quite popular for corporations to finance um, short-term uh, short-term needs and in fact companies like General Motors I don't believe they have it anymore but they had GMAC that was their financing arm and how did they raise the money to create these these car loans well they issued commercial paper okay Ford has FMAC and that's what they use. They use commercial paper to provide the funds to uh, create car loans, okay? Which, you know, made them money, but was also um, a good complement to their core business. I mean, if you can't get a loan, 
then it's difficult to buy a car. So this made it easier for them. Um, commercial paper, the use of commercial paper increased significantly in the early 80s because of rising uh, cost of bank loans. Um, another important money market instrument is known as a banker's acceptance. Um, this is an order to pay a specified amount to the bearer on a given date if uh, specified conditions have been met. And those specified conditions are usually delivery of promised goods. Uh, these are often used when buyers or sellers of expensive goods live in different countries. I mean, that can be uh, uh, quite difficult to deal with. It's hard to know a lot about the company that I'm um, you know, exporting something to. So a banker's acceptance is, is a much better way for me to deal with that. Um, what are the advantages of a banker's acceptance? Uh, the exporter uh, is paid immediately. The exporter is shielded from foreign exchange risk. Okay, So they don't have to worry about uh, exchange rates changing and them getting less in their home currency. So if it's a U.S. exporter, they don't have to worry about if they're exporting to Japan, they don't have to worry that the yen dollar exchange rate moves in an unfavorable direction and they actually receive less dollars. Uh, the exporter does not have to assess the financial security of the importer. Again, that's good. I mean, I don't have to worry about whether this uh, importer is credit worthy or not, it may be difficult to know. I mean, in this country, it may be easy, it might be easier to figure out the credit worthiness of a U.S. company, especially a large one. But a company in Europe or Japan, you know, my company may not know much about them, and it's hard to know whether they're a good credit risk. Um, and the reason we don't have to worry about that is the importer's bank guarantees the payment, hence the term banker's acceptance. So if it's backed by a reputable bank, I don't have to worry about that. And clearly this is, uh, you know, from uh, the first few things we've mentioned here, this is going to be really important in international trade. Um, there's also an active secondary market for banker's acceptances, okay, until they mature. So the terms of the note indicate that the bearer, uh, whoever that is, will be paid upon maturity. Sometimes you hear the term bearer bonds. Okay? That means that there's no one's name is on the bond, okay? or in this case, banker's acceptance. The person who happens to have it, it's as good as cash. Um, bearer bonds pop up a lot in movies where someone wants to break in to a bank and steal the bearer bonds because they're, it's like stealing money. So if you steal a you know, a million dollars in bearer bonds. I believe that's what they were looking for in the um, movie Die Hard, um, which is um, quite old, but sort of a classic in, in um, you know, bank robbery thrillers. Um, <clears throat> another money market instrument that's, that's very important are euro dollars. Euro dollars represent dollar denominated deposits held in foreign banks. Um, the market's essential since many foreign contracts call for payment in U.S. dollars uh, due to the stability of the dollar and relative, uh, relative to other currencies. So the U.S. dollar is stable. Most people, many people want to get paid in dollars. So it's much better to hold them there. They also became very popular when interest rates shot up in the U.S., and it was the case where we had these regulations, Regulation Q, that limited the interest rates that banks could pay. So if people found a way to get around this, they'd deposit their money in a foreign bank that didn't have the same controls and could pay a higher interest rate, but they were still dollar denominated. Okay. Uh, the different rates, uh, the London interbank bid rate, okay, that's the rate paid by banks buying funds, the one you hear more is the London Interbank Offer Rate, LIBOR, and that's the rate offered for sale of the fund. So that's the rate they charge for borrowing this money. So the money market is a place where um, financial institutions and corporations can go and borrow short-term 
and you can see that there are a bunch of different money market securities that can be used um, uh, to do this financing.